Next up, it's Cisco Works LMS 4.0. It's a completely redesigned user experience. It's based on the things that you need. Jimmy Ray is here with Tejas in the lab to break it all down. Tejas Saul, welcome back to TechWatch TV, hey, man. Hey, thanks, Jimmy, for having me here. Good to have you here. So if you're here, that must mean LMS, right? You got it. So now, the, I've done a lot of reading, and uh, I've been pretty darn excited about the stuff that uh, I've seen and messed around with on LMS 4.0. I mean, this is a whole different product. This is not what we're used to seeing here. You better believe it, exactly. This is like not your grandpa's, you know, LMS. Boy, this is a very that. new LMS. For example, you know, we have completely revamped the UI. Let me show you. For example, if you look at the uh, UI layout, it looks really cool. You know, <laughs> all the menu systems and everything. Talk about menu, you there's no more RME, there's no more campus. What do you see is here? Inventory, monitoring, configuration. This is something that our customers can relate to. This is and how I would use it. And exactly, if you wanted to do anything with the configuration, where you would go? In the configuration. If you wanted to run a report, you go into reporting. If you wanted to tweak something in the settings, you go to admin and so forth. So this is really powerful. We introduced some of the very you know, uh, good web tools. For example, the mouse over. This is really awesome. Anytime you see any IP address, huh. you mouse over any IP address and you get the information right there. For example, the iOS version, the last you know, config archive, inventory archive, and so forth. Not only that, we actually allow you to launch tools from here. For example, you can launch Device Center, Cisco View, and all that stuff. And you know, as time goes, we'll have more and more tools that can help you do your day-to-day -day troubleshooting. That's pretty darn cool. And we have the same thing for the ports. So if you look at the ports, I want to know where the port is connected. You know, what kind of speed does it have? Is it up or down? You know, things like that. The basic thing that needs to be accessed real time, you can uh, have it right there. The other cool thing is a search feature. You know, if if I uh, if I didn't have this dashboard in front of me, and if I wanted to see, okay, I know the device ends with 178 here. You know, I want to see, you know, what kind of device is it? So I can see the information right here. But guess what? The same kind of information can be accessed right here as well. So this is very powerful. That's kind of cool because on the on the on the other products we have, we've had the search function in there as well. But this mouse over it really makes it very. Uh, absolutely. I, I hate to sound so cliche here, but it makes it sound very Web 2.0-ish, or feel Ab very Web 2.0-ish. Oh, absolutely. And the event dashboard here is really cool. You can see how many events are there right here. It's always in front of you, and this is very powerful. The other thing we introduced is, you know, the, uh, the getting started. You know, a lot of customers have, you know, difficulty getting started with LMS. You know, once I log in, you know, what do I do? Where do I get started? So we created something called getting started and that allows you to slowly, you know, configure things in a very orderly fashion. Well, that's pretty darn important because one of the things that, I mean, out of the box, any, uh, you know, NMS uh, system out there and stuff is going to take a lot of configuration. Right. Uh, typically, you're going to training for, you know, sometimes weeks at a time Absolutely. to actually figure this out. So you've got a nice process kind of top to bottom uh, here to actually show how that works then. Absolutely. In fact, our customers like it so much, they start using getting started as a way of doing things on a regular basis as well. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's pretty cool. The other thing is, if you still used to the old LMS style navigation, if you like that, we haven't forgotten you. We still have the same navigation right here. This is pretty powerful. Oh, that's kind of cool because, you know, when you said you got rid of it, you know, I know yeah. people are watching tech, like, oh, I love RME, man. What would you do with RME right. here? Hey, I can't let you skip this though, man. We'll just manage roles thing. What's oh, this? Oh yeah, that's really nice. For example, now you can actually create the local roles itself in LMS. So you can define your own custom role. You can make it a default role. So anyone that logs in who doesn't have a user defined can have that same role. So you, you can define exactly what user gets what role. Really? Yeah, it's really and awesome. And it changes their looks and stuff. So is this uh, so is this a static template? Can I actually go in there and, and yeah. tweak that? Yeah, you out can a tweak bit? it to the nth level. You can actually go down and say, make Cisco View read only for this guy, but Cisco View has read write for the other person. This is very powerful. Where am I pulling those writes from? Can I pull them from like Active Directory or from Tacus Plus? Or? You can actually define to authenticate with Active Directory. In fact, you know we are authenticating with Cisco LDAP right now. So I'm. Oh really? I'm logged in as myself with Cisco AD, and then I'm defining my role as network admin. That's a default role, and so this is what I can do. Huh. So this is very powerful. All right, so moving on to configuration. That's something different in this version. Yeah, this is where the rubber hits the road right oh, here, Oh, absolutely. Man. So in, in old LMS, you know, you had um, net config as a way of doing global changes as yeah. well as on a port level. But you know, if you started dealing with you know different customizable you know uh, configuration for each device, that was not quite there. Mm -hmm. So in this version, we created something called a template. Now the template has the information of what the configurations are, what the parameters are, 
what kind of device does it apply to. So you can have automatic filtering once you select the template. So for example, I'm going to use this small branch EIGRPD VPN template. By the way, we got this template from Cisco Configuration Profession uh, tool, and this is like a Cisco from the CCP element manager. Absolutely. How'd so, you get that? So we actually uh, uh, worked with the other BUs, and we we create a template that's actually a Cisco CVD, Cisco Validated Design. So you can take this off-the-shelf configuration and deploy it to a branch, and you can have it working. This well, has been I'll tested. This is tested. So it's all these uh, you know templates here are pretty good. That's pretty cool. And not only that, you can actually create your own template. You can export the template, you can create your own template, you can do a lot of things with it. Yeah. So I'm going to show you how it's easy it is to deploy one of these templates. Um, you can go to the next step here once you select the templates. Easy is good, man. Uh, <laughs> and you can select all the uh, devices. For example, as I mentioned, it filters down. So even if I have a lot of devices, it filters down to three devices. Oh, if I, it's smart enough to know which device it exactly, actually applies to. Exactly. All the device is built into this. So now, once you have these three devices, you know, you can actually click on edit, uh, but that's pretty boring. You're gonna, you can fill out all the information, and if you have a lot of information and variables for one device, it's going to take a lot of time. A long time, man. I would rather Im import this from a file that I know, you know, I have all the information. So you can export the file if you like, uh, do your Excel thing, and then come back here, and then, you know, you can import it back. Or just so a CSV? Exactly. So you can uh, select your CSV file, and then you can upload this, and guess what? It's going to populate all the fields for you. Uh, and once you have that, you can quickly deploy this. Yeah. So I don't have to, so this would make sense if you have more than 10 devices or five devices, it would re make real good sense. Well, most of us have that anyway, right? Absolutely. Most of us have spreadsheets that exactly. we enter that stuff in and plug that in, so that, that actually works pretty cool. So this is the uh, additional ad hoc commands, if you like, on top of that, and if you don't have any, you can skip this, and you can then actually start seeing what CLIs are getting sent to the device. So if I have like an EEM script or something I want to put in yeah. here, I can put that out? And you, got it. It. you got it. You got it. Yeah, you got it. Now that's cool. And now if you have, uh, this is a template. So as you can see, the host name got populated. You can scroll down sure. and you can see other variables getting populated. And you can see this for each and every device that was selected. So you can be sure, you know, what's getting pushed out to your devices before you send it.